Yo, and welcome to the Mix Wizard Sessions Episode 9, where we're going to look at virtual sound check and using Waves audio protocol for your virtual sound check and how to set that up. So, what is virtual sound check? Virtual sound check is the ability to, while you're you know, running the, the show, rehearsing the show, doing the sound check with the band. You can record all of your channels and then turn them around and do a sound check while the band has left or the performers have gone home. You can turn the audio around and play it back through the system. This is an absolute killer tool and has really revolutionised the ability for training, in audio mixing, even to, to refining your shows, it's one of the best tools that has come out of digital mixes, okay? So if you, it's not something you're currently using, it is an excellent tool and I can encourage people to get a handle on it and start using it. So let's unpack it. So I'm using the Waves sound card in my DLive, okay? It's the 128 channel Waves card. I like this card because it gives me the full 128 channels um, at 48 or 96K, okay? So it'll do a sample rate convert. That's a very useful thing. If you're doing the full 128 channels, um, you've got to have a pretty decent computer to record 128 channels at 96K. So a lot of the time I record my shows that are 128 channels at 48K, okay? Um, the current show that I'm going to show you is at 48K and we'll step through those processes. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is just the interfaces and how it works and hopefully this is going to help some people answer some questions. So first off, um, you've got to download the software for your Mac. So it's called Waves Sound Grid Studio, so you download that from the Waves site. Okay, you do need to register, you've got to give them, submit an email, create an account and then you can download Waves Sound Grid Studio. Couple of things, Andrew's theory of life here. Okay, I never upgrade to the latest and greatest. Okay, I normally always, I'm happy to stay a version behind on things like this, especially on computers. I let everyone else make sure, you know, make sure that, you know, well, they can iron out all the bugs, really. That's what it comes down to. Um, so I tend to stay one, you know, a version behind if it's all working, especially if I'm out going out on a tour, or I'm doing a show, I'll quite happily stay with what's stable. So in this software, okay, I'm going to have a quick look. So you can see I also have, which you have to download, you've got to download the drivers for the Allen and Heath Waves card, okay, from the, from the Waves site. I've popped it in here, so basically you go in. Now, a lot of the time it will automatically find things, okay. Um, you can literally do this auto config, this button here, okay. Um, and then here, this is my computer, and if I go down, you can see... I've got it selected to 128 channels. Now, it will automatically patch it. When you set those things up, okay, and if you do an auto config especially, it will automatically patch it. But if you need to do a patch, you hit the patch button at the top here, okay, and you go device to device. So you can see I am going sound grid card to my MacBook. Okay, and if we scroll, it's actually, you'll see it's all 128 channels. Um, and we can also do it the other way. So we can go, uh, if I scroll all the way to top, shrink that, and we can go computer to sound grid, and you can see all the channels are patched there. Okay, so if you need to change your patch, or you don't want a standard patch, that's where you would look at doing it. Okay. So a couple of things, obviously, I am using a Thunderbolt connection. If I go up and have a look, I've probably got it on a manual IP, to be honest. Open network preferences. So you'll see here I've got a manual IP, okay, set up, and I'm using my Thunderbolt to Ethernet uh, adapter, okay. That then appears in here, in the middle of the screen, where it says network port. What network port are you using? Now, one important thing, let's just have a look. I'm running at 48K, you can see that up in this window, and I'm in slave mode. So, to do that, I set up here, I'm opening my Allen and Heath window. You've got to go to internal, instead of digital, 
then you can clock it down to 48. Okay? So normally if you're at 96K, that will be on digital source and the sample rate will be at 96. Because I'm doing 48, these are the settings. Cool? Now, let's leave that for a minute and I'll jump to Reaper so we can probably have some audio. And let's take a look at the desk. What's going on in the desk? So, one thing I love is how easy this is in the desk. So, if I'm going to make it inactive for a second, it's a matter of selecting your I.O. port. So I've got the Waves card installed in the Mix Rack port 1, OK? So when you want to record the show, you can see here I've just got 1 to 128 selected, OK? And it's as simple as just going record send. Some other outputs are assigned, but I'm going to continue. OK, and I am now recording the 128 channels to the computer. One button press. And to return it, I do the same thing. I hit the one button and I'm now returning all those channels to the console. Now, there's one other thing that is important and this is what I have found using this setup is the clock source sync. I tend to, when I'm doing this setup at 48K, when I go to playback mode, I tell the console to sync to the Waves card. Okay? So that is in my mix rack setup, audio sync, under audio, audio sync. And you can see that the clock source is the mix rack I.O. port. Okay? Um, I have found that sometimes, now I don't do this when I'm recording, when I'm recording it's all good, but when I turn it back for the um, playback when I'm at 48k, quite often I get the rice bubbles, the snap, crackle, pop as we call it, okay, those little digital artefacts. When I go and clock it till the, the D live to take its clock from wherever port the waves card is, I have found that the snap, crack, snap crackle, pop uh, goes away, okay? Um, this is only something that is at 48k. When you're at pure 96k, I, it doesn't seem to have the snack crapple pop, okay? Um, it is doing a sample rate conversion, so all I'm doing is telling the D Live, go get your source, your, your sync from that card. Um, cool, so these are some things I've found with the setup, okay? Um, one other thing you may be unaware of, um, if I have a channel, and I'm just going to go look at channel 1 here, if I want to take a channel out of the virtual sound check, literally it's as simple as doing it right there on that button. So on the preamp, you can see in the preamp window here on the console, um, you can see there's a virtual sound check button. So any channel, once you go to virtual sound check, will have that button. If you want to take so maybe you're doing a theatre show rehearsal or something like that and you want to fire the sound effects manually, you take that channel out of the virtual sound check. Cool? It's as simple as that. Excellent. Okay. So let's just go and have a quick look. So I've, I'm in uh, playback mode and if I go down here and select a part of the song... Inactive and it's gone away. Simple as that. Virtual sound check. Cool. Pretty simple. Now, it's there's no more, not much more complication to that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do another one on Dante, but the principles are very similar. Uh, I think I've actually got a secret friend going to pop in for the Dante one. Um, I've not gone into a lot more technology. You don't have to run it as a fixed IP. You can just run DHCP. Um, yeah. Simple as that. Okay. Um, yeah. I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you want these multi-tracks, they were in the previous episode. So go back, download it, have a mix and have a bit of fun. And I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, the next episode... We've got the special guest, so Dr. Rob Clark, keep watching. I think everyone will love the next couple of episodes. See yous.